Hi there. Today we are looking at how to sew this cute Victorian corset gown with a wrapped draping skirt and spaghetti sleeve. If this is something you'd love to do, stick and stay, let's do it together. So we we'll first mark this to serve as our starting line. Then we we'll move down 4 inches from this very point. And this is our shoulder to nipple. 3 inches to serve as our shoulder to underbust and 3 inches shoulder to waist. We do 8 inches, that is shoulder to hip. Then we square all these off. Next, we mark our nipple to nipple measurement divided by 2. We do same on the hip line. Then we join these two points. At the end of the bust, we move one inch away from this line on both sides and same on the waistline. Then we join. We join to the apex of our bust point. Then we also connect to the hip line. At the top here, we move 4 inches. Since the nipple to nipple was 3.5, we add half to it. Then we come back by 1, forward by 1 inch. There's also the top nut. We move upwards by 1 inch from the nipple point. Then we connect to the top nut. We draw a line to connect these two. Then we divide our past measurement into 4. Then we add our seam allowance of 2 inches. We come upwards by 1 inch. We square this off as well. Then we transfer our past measurement and then the seam allowance to this new line that we connect using an S-like shape. At the center front, right on the nipple line, we move upwards by 2 inches. Then we connect to get our sweetheart shape. We also need to measure this as you see me doing right now. Then we just oppose that with the other side and then we make up for the difference. And so this is supposed to be our new line. We redefine it to get our sweetheart shape. Right. So then we get to the waist divided by 4. We add our darts to it and then our seam allowance is also added. On the hip line, our hip measurement divided by 4, we mark, then we add our seam allowance, no dot. Now we connect these dots. So on our side, we measure 2 inches from the waist downwards, then we take off our seam allowance. At the center front, we come down by 4 inches. Then we cut this part of the hip line and then we fold our dart onto the other so that we have space to join from the side to the center front. Now on both sides of our darts, we move quarter of an inch. Then we reconnect to the waist that. Now we are to extend this upper line to get to the center back. Then we extend the waistline and then the hip line. Just want to cut this to make it easier for us to work with it. On the upper line, we divide our bust into four. 
and then we add our 2 inch seam allowance to it. On the waistline, we divide our waist into 4. We add 1.5 inches as that. Then we add our 2 inches seam allowance. On the hip line, the hip divided by 4 plus our 2 inch seam allowance. Remember, there's no dot on the hip line. Then we connect the dots. Now, whatever we had as our nipple to nipple, we add quarter to it at the back and mark. So this is 3 and 3 quarters. The same thing we've done on the top. Then we draw a line to connect this all the way to the hip line. Since we added one and half, we divide it two here, and then we join. This is to give us our back dart lines. Right. We fold this dart onto the other. Then we mark two inches on our side. Then we take off the two inches seam allowance just as we did for the front. At the center back, we are to connect this very point straight to the center back line. This is measuring two inches. So I need to do that correction here. Now we're marking one inch from the center front and then also one inch away from the first dart line and then we reconnect. This will now be cut through one, two, three, four, five. We will not cut through one and two, it would only serve as a boning channel. So we've used this to cut these other panels you see here into the same shape this is what we're going to deal with we've used this to cut our interfaces this is where we added the allowance as you can see so we have two pieces of the one and two we have four pieces of three, four, and then five. So these are the various pieces we've had yet to join. We're going to join number three to number two. We're doing both the lining and then the fashion fabric as well. And this is number four and five. So we are yet to go and join all these pieces. I usually prefer to stitch the beginning. Then we're going to start from the other side so that by the time we are done sewing there wouldn't be any excess this is a sewing trick that comes in handy so we are joining the fashion fabrics now after which we'll join the lining this has been interfaced with a woven tricot and it's called corset stiff in Ghana and then the linings have also been stiffed with violin or stiff or gum stay as our Nigerian brothers would also call it right so this is what we have 
we also stitch in that of the back for both the lining and the fashion fabric itself so you can see as draw number one and two that is the demarcations have all been drawn and then on the side two we move one inch we move one just as we had for the front on the pattern when it goes to this we mark three inches and then one inch on this side down here so we have our channels remember the boning is done on the lining when stitching the red line bone onto the fabric what you do is that you leave about half of an inch on top and half beneath this is because we don't want it to interfere with our sewing when we are finishing the top or the down part of our dress so that's one of the most important techniques we need when we are fixing our boning into our dress And so we are reducing our bone by half of an inch. After we've done that for the front, we do same for the back patterns as well. Remember, we are boning only the lining and not the fashion fabric. don't forget to subscribe if you're new to this channel and if also not subscribed if there is anything that you need clarity on just send us through the comment section right and so there's one thing about ridgeline bone it usually comes in its own shape and sometimes it's coiled because of the rolls that they are manufactured and put into packaged into actually and so when you're sewing it doesn't really matter the direction that you placed it in you can actually heat the bones and then it would assume whatever shape you want it to have so that's what we are doing right here we're steaming it giving it excess heat and that makes it malleable and we're able to you know put it into whatever shape we want to have it the clapper also helps it to cool off a bit faster and maintain the shape we are looking for This is one technique you don't want to miss. Right, so we have our shape neatly carved. We're cutting strips of one and a half inches width and the length should be reasonable. That is, it should be longer than our bodies as we've stitched right now because we are going to use this as a decorative boning channel on the fashion fabrics themselves as so if anybody sees this the person would think that we did the boning outside that is on the fashion fabric but no these are just decorative after the one and a half we fold them in two like this and then we give it a press so when you fold it into two you have three quarters here after that we insert our hem tape some call it hemet or hem gum whatever but we just insert it so that it becomes a bit heavy and the two folded fabrics become compact so when we are stitching on it doesn't move away these channels that we had for the one and two 
and then the boning channels. We are to transfer them to the good side so that we stitch these very, very channels we created on them. We stitch the rough side, that is the rough edge, first on one side all the way to the top from the bottom. Then we flip it over to conceal the first stitch we made. Then we reinforce it with another top stitch on the other side so that we have two flat fill seams parallel to each other. We repeat same for the other channels. This is so easy and beginner friendly. Right. And so after we've done this, it's now time to do our draping. I have held just the front onto my dummy using elastics at the back and then this other fabric is cut not necessarily on bias but then it has a bit of stretch when pulled to the sideways so our first pin this new fabric onto it then we start with our drape it should be folded reasonably that is the size you are folding inward. You usually would need the help of, you know, a colleague. And this is also because I don't have a drapable mannequin. That's how come I use this. If I did, pinning would be quite easy. But because we can't pin on this dummy, I need to use this method. After you do one draping, you iron. So we'll keep on pressing them and then pleating as you desire. We we'll give it a press again. We repeat this. So we exhaust all the fabric we had. The last edge is folded inward. So that the rough edge is not exposed. After this, we don't leave it. We have to stitch just as you see me do. We stitch at the base all the way through the dress. And remember, at this point, we have not added our lining to the dress. And so we are stitching this to the wrong side. That is the base of our pleats. We keep repeating this so we've exhausted all the pleats we created.
this is not difficult but it's a bit time consuming but worth the beauty you have at the end of the day For this and many educative content, do well to subscribe to this channel. Share with us your comments and all your thoughts. So this is how we tie the knot and then we are done with this very line. We repeat same and after they are done we give it a good press. You see how neat it looks? It may look quite confusing but then it's easy to do. After that we take off the elastic straps that we had created at the back. And just as I said, this is because this dummy is not pinnable. And that's how come we are using this elastic, you know, just to hold the front to the dummy for us to be able to work with easily. This is how it looks like. We'll go and then cut off the excesses so that we still maintain our shape. It's ideal to stitch the edge before you cut we trim all the excesses Now we've created a strap, this is just about half inch. With the help of a loop turner, we are turning it good side out. And the length measures 12 and a half inches. You can make it quite longer, that is if your client is around to do the fitting before you correct it. But then, if your client is not around and you have a correct measurement, you can just use the measurement strap from the upper bust all the way to the back. After this, we place the lining good size together. We pin this, go ahead, and then we stitch the top. After stitching, we create notches so that turning it to the other side, we wouldn't have any puckering at the top of our Victorian corset. It's now time to turn it to the good side. right now when it comes to the back we would also put the fashion fabrics and the lining good size together like this then we'll go ahead and stitch and also finish the center back when it comes to the skirts this is the waist as you see the hip the knee and then the length of our skirt we have taken two inches off and that's because we added two inches to the waist of our top we've taken it off this are waist divided by 4, our hip divided by 4 plus our seam allowance 2 inches. On the knee line, this is our hip divided by 4 but then minus 2 inches. And since it's a straight skirt, we come all the way down. 
the only difference is this is that we have taken off two inches from the waistline reducing our skirt length and this is the shape for one side of our skirt that's the right side of our skirt and that comes to overlap to give us the slit in front so this is it these are quite easy to do that's how come I didn't really bother and it doesn't really have a specific measurement to use when it comes to the top we're also moving away about half of an inch on both the sides and that is exactly where you're going to place the front and then we'll mark the shape after getting our center front onto this brown paper then we come upwards by half of an inch and that will be the allowance that we use to stitch we've also created these lines and that would be for the drapes in our skirt we need to place these two together so that we can shape the V shape that we have in the skirt we can shape it to affect both pattern papers so here we cut it off and we can take our pins out and then we have the left and then we have that of the right when it comes to this we cut through but we make sure that we don't cut it all the way through we leave something small so that we can open the papers up without having to lose them just like this we take this to another fabric and this is a as you see we're leaving just about two inches in between them then we'll go ahead and cut with a cutting we cut the side and then we come up like this following this very line and then we do same we follow this line upwards we follow that line upwards and then we cut along the paper we do same for this because this is the last we just cut upwards and then we are done now we're going to join these pieces and by the time we are done folding them we should have it like this we should have it just as we had it when we had not really cut them through and that would help us maintain the shape exactly as we had it so that's a motive to be able to fold the drapes back onto themselves so that we still have our shape intact so when we pick this very first one that is the second one actually we place it on the first as a little sign so our, our shape is still maintained and not lost we pin this accuracy is key here after that we pick the third and also place on the second the aim is to get the shape as we had it before cutting through them We repeat this so we exhaust all the lines we had cut through this is just about the last one
so this is it it's ideal to go and stitch to secure it and then we cut the excess off we'll go and finish this part when it comes to the other side too we fold our hem inward and give it a press then we would also go ahead and finish this other side that is the inside ones that would overlap and we leave the side seams unattended to now we're matching them and creating an overlap we pin these two in place and since the waistline was the same when we're cutting the pattern paper we would make sure the two fabrics are the same and so that's what we are pinning here after pinning it's best to go ahead and stitch now we're going to join the top to the skirt matching the center front to the center front then the rest also follows We're going to stitch I've already fixed the zipper in our back skirt so we're just going to join the top all that we leave is just about quarter of an inch just as you see here we're going to stitch all the way to the side and repeat same for the other side as well after stitching this now we place the two front and back dress pieces together and then we'll go ahead and stitch our seam allowances as we had added two inches on both sides then we place our eyelets and then our closures then we're good to go so this is it beautifully done very easy but classy thank you so so much for watching and staying tuned in